the mandible makes lateral movements the most during chewing. Our aim when applying prosthetic restorations is to prevent especially posterior cusp interferences during these lateral movements. However, in all situations where an appropriate articulator is not used, it is very hard to avoid such interferences and the probable results are the restoration fractures and the patient complaining with a feeling of pebble chewing. The mandible makes a vertical rotational movement on the working side condyle axis during lateral movements while completing the chewing cycle. Meanwhile, the balancing condyle makes a forward, inward and downward movement. The chosen articulator should mimic this movement. However, when we have a close look to this lateral movement, it can be observed that it is not that easy. In most of the population, the mandible cannot perform a solely rotational movement around the working condyle, first it shifts sideways slightly. The reason for this side shift has been shown to be the resilience of the muscles and ligaments as well as the anatomy of the glenoid fossae. Adapting this movement pattern in the articulator is important, especially when establishing a flawless occlusion for implant dentures or tooth-retained zirconia crowns. At the very beginning of the lateral movement, the mandible moves inwards slightly. Then it continues to move forwards, downwards and inwards. The first part of the movement is called the immediate side shift. This shifting, also called the Bennett movement, is approximately 0.75 to 1 mm. The second part, called the precurrent, and the third, called progressive shiftings, make up a total of 3 to 4 mm movement. At the same time, the angle formed between the condyle and the sagittal plane is called the Bennett angle. Although it differs among the individuals, it is approximately 7.5 to 13 degrees. Bennett's movement and its angle are the most important parameters of occlusion, according to some authors. In order for the dental technician to adjust the cusp to fossae relationship without any interference, he or she should apply these values at the restoration design stage. From this point of view, it is advised to choose the articulators that propose Bennett angle adjustments. The Bennett angle that is adjusted individually or with approximate values provides the dental technician to create an occlusal morphology required for a comfortable occlusion. However, for an effective Bennett angle, it is obligatory for the articulator to make immediate side shift, in other words, the Bennett movement. In articulators that mimic this movement, right and left relieving screws are present. These screws should be relieved 0.5 mm to reach a total of 1 mm relief. For digital articulators, it is sufficient to enter the desired value. In cases of full mouth restorations, aged and or worn dentition where single crowns are made, the technician should be asked to make a relief of at least 1 mm. This enables to transfer the condylar movement of the patient exactly to the articulator and thus the occlusal morphology. As a result, the transfer of the most detrimental lateral forces for the loading of prosthetic restorations to the restoration, implant or the abutment teeth are limited to a major extent. Furthermore, the desired canine guidance or group functioning occlusal schemes can be achieved in the restorations with relief, just as in the patient's mouth and the time spent in the clinic for the try-ins is greatly reduced.